Buddy, you like school? You like school? Yeah? You want vacation? Yeah? You want to go to eat a hamburger? Do you like math? Do you like math? No? You don't like math? Nothing? How about geometry, if I be specific? Geometry? Yeah? Good day. So our next lesson here is called a normal distribution. Sometimes called a normal curve, other times called a normal model, but nevertheless it has normal. Normal means it is a bell-shaped curve, which is perfectly symmetrical on the left and on the right. When you see all of the data towards the right-hand side, it is called negatively skewed because it would take a whole lot of numbers on this side for it to become normal. When you see all the numbers on the left-hand side, as you see in this other diagram here, it is called positively skewed because it would take a lot of positive numbers to go back into a normal curve. The normal curve has or contains 100% of the values underneath it. 50% on the right and 50% on the left. Right down the middle is the mean. It divides the two halves of the normal curve. The normal, normal curve creates a bell-shaped curve. 50% on the right, 50% on the left. I just said that. I just want to repeat it and make sure you picked it up. The spread of the normal distribution is controlled by the standard deviation. In other words, every one of these little lines here is one standard deviation. To the right, positive standard deviations. To the left, negative standard deviations. And when you have a normal distribution, both the mean and the median will be exactly right down the middle. And as you can see over on the other two or over here, when it's not, you see a disparity. So you can clearly see the mean, medium, and the mode in different places, okay? I'm going to begin by uh, doing some of your homeworks from normal, uh, normal curve letter A. So if you'll please take out your normal curve letter A, I would appreciate it. And hopefully by this time, you also have downloaded the Z table. What is the Z table? It looks like this. This is when it's on the negative side, so you see all these negative values on the left, and this is the positive, so you see all the positive numbers. The problem with this particular page that I had uploaded first is that there are numbers hiding in the dark spots here. So after I was reminded that those numbers were hard to see, I went back and I put in another one that says clear on it. So now there are no dark spots. You can see both of these pages. So please download them and have them readily available so you can do your homework, so you can take your quiz on Friday, and so you can use it on your final examination. Okay, I'll show you how to use these shortly. Okay, just keep them handy. Should you not want any of the ones that I have provided for you, all you gotta do is just Google Z table or Z tables, and you'll see a variety of images. You go pick the one you like the best. They're all the same, okay? Okay then, let's begin with number one of your homework, which again is letter A. I'm gonna do all of A for you, and then you're gonna be doing letter B. All righty. So it says, choose a statement which is true. And number one is true because it says that the area under the curve is always one. I told you a few minutes ago that the area underneath the curve is always 100%, otherwise known as one. 50% on the left, 50% on the right. So that statement is true. Number two, it says the shape of the graph in standard normal distribution is skewed. No, normal means perfect. It's not skewed to the uh, positively and it's not skewed negatively in either direction, okay? So therefore, this one is normal. That statement is false. And then it says that the mean is one. Well, we don't know what the mean is. It depends on the data. So number one, the only answer possible is number one, which is of course letter A. Okay, that was number one. Numbers three, two, three, four, and five all have to do with this particular page here. So let me show you what this means. When you saw the notes earlier, I said that it's 100% is underneath the curve. So what you gotta do is you gotta remember these three values. If you go one standard deviation to the right, it's 34.1% in a normal distribution, mind you. And if you go to the left, it's 34.1%. 
Together, that's 68.2%. That's one standard deviation. If you go two standard deviations, you're gonna add 13.6 plus 13.6, that's the second standard deviation, which is a total of 95.4, okay? And if, you, uh, yes, 95.4, you can clearly see it there, basic, barely see it. And then if you add one more standard deviation, the red one here, which is 2.1 and 2.1, you'll end up with 99.7, almost the whole curve. That's because there's a little bit left at the end there. If you cannot see it clearly there, I tried my best here. So this is your normal curve here. There is your mean right smack in the middle. 34.1, if you may or just 34%, 34%. The next one is 13.6 and 13.6. The next one is 2.1 and 2.1. So when you take the one standard deviation, 34 plus 34 is 68%. When you take two standard deviations, 13 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.6 is 95.4. When you take three standard deviations, that's 2.1 plus 13.6 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.6 plus 2.1, that's a total of 99.7 percent of the curve. Where is the other point three? Over here, this little bit on the right and a little bit on the left here, okay? So that is the normal curve. So let's do five questions all the way to number five really, really quick like. Number two says, take a look at letter D, and it's letter D is right there, and tell me what percent it is, and it is 34 percent, which is point three four, letter A, 34 percent. Number three says, what about D plus E? Well, D plus E is this guy plus this guy. Okay, so if we were to add this guy plus this guy, you'd be looking at 34 plus 13.6, which is around 47. So therefore the answer is C, because that's D plus E, okay? Number four says, find the area of F. Well, F is 2.1. So you look over here and you look for 2.1. Now, all of these were percents. Remember that when you have to go to decimal, you gotta move the place over two places. So you're not gonna see point, a 2.1, you're gonna put, see 0 0.021, 0 0.021 and then four, okay? That takes care of all one, two, three, and four. Number five says B, C, D, E, and F. Oh my goodness, they want you to add this guy B plus C plus D plus E plus F. So all you gotta do is add all these numbers here for number five, and you will end up with 97.5%, which is letter C, 0.9759, okay? Just add all those numbers, and you'll see what the answer is. Number six, now, number six, there is a problem with number six. That's because if you take a look at the, pro, uh, the diagram that they've given you, they've given you a diagram which contains two standard deviations. And then they wrote 90%. Well, that's not 90%. When we added it earlier over here, remember it was 95.4%. So really, it's about 95%. Okay, so now it's time for us to go use the chart. First of all, I'll recap. It's not 90%, it really should be 95%. You are going to go look up in the chart 0.95, and you're, you're going to use your two fingers to see what the answer is, which is 1.65. So let me show you how to do that. You're gonna go to your Z table here, and you're gonna look for 0.95, and that is, uh, it keeps growing, so keep going, and you can see this is all the way to 0.46, that's too small. So let me keep going until I find the closest number to 0.95, 0 0.97, 0 0.96, 0 0.95. <clears throat> that's about here somewhere. 0.9505, it's right there. Or 0.9495, it's between these two here. So here's what you do to get the answer. You run to the left and it's 1.6. And then you go up and you get 0 0.05. Once again, you look for 95%, which is right here, somewhere right about where my finger is. You go to the left and it reads 1.6. You go up and it reads 0 0.05, okay? So when you put 1.6, 1 1.6, 1 .6, and 0 0.05, and you add them, you will end up with 1.65. That there is number six. I'll be back for these tables some more really, really soon. Okay, number seven. 
they give you a diagram that looks like this and now it's 90%. So if this was 90%, you are gonna go back to your chart and you are going to look up to see what 90% is. So let me hide the answer for you. Once again, I'm going to go look for 0 0.90. Let's see, nine zero, the closest number to nine zero is 0.8897. It's right there, it's almost 90%, 89.97%. So once again, once you find the number, go to the left, that's 1.2, and then go up, that's 0 0.08. So 1.2 and 0 0.08, when you add it, is 1.28 right there. That is how you use your Z table, okay? That takes care of number seven. Let's see about number eight. Now, in your notes, there was this formula. The formula that is in your notes looks like this. Now you can use these symbols here. I like this one better. It basically says, if you want to know the Z value, all you gotta do is get the value of the score you're using, take away the mean and divide by the standard deviation. In other words, value minus mean divided by standard deviation. X minus X with a bar divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so what does that mean? If I read question number eight, it's going to tell me that the mean is 72%. It's gonna tell me the standard deviation is eight, and it's gonna tell me that the test score is 85. Remember that the Z score is equal to the value, which is 85, take away the mean, which is 72, divided by the standard deviation, which is eight. So this is your score, X. This we already knew was the mean, and this little symbol here stands for standard deviation. So if you see it on the formula, it looks like that. In other words, the formula looks like this. The Z value is equal to the score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So I'm gonna plug those numbers in and you got 85, take away 72 divided by eight, the calculator will say 1.625, which when I look at number eight is letter A. Okay, that's number eight. Moving on to number nine, if you read it, it's going to tell you the following information, just like the last one. It says that the score this time is 76, that the mean is 72, and that the standard deviation is 8.4. So once again, the score, take away the mean, divided by the standard deviation. So the score 76, take away the mean 72, divided by the standard deviation, and you get 0.476, which number nine is letter A again, okay? Number 10 is going to ask you to go and see when your Z value is less than or equal to 0.64. So on your previous charts, you have something that looks like this. When it's less than to the left of this, because it starts from the negative side and moves to the right, you're just gonna use the values that are on your table here. But when it's greater than, that means that they don't want the shaded area, they want the white area here, the non-shaded area, which means that you have to start from 100% and take away the shaded area and you will know the non-shaded area. Sort of what you did in shaded polygons when you were in geometry, okay? So, this particular one says when Z is less than 0.64. Well, goodness, all I gotta do is go look up 0.6 at four. So this time, I'm going backwards. This time, I'm going to go look for 0.6 at four. Look up, 0.6 and your Z-score at zero, 04. So here goes my chart. 0.6 is right here. Zero, 04 is up here. So all I gotta do is go look for the percent. Once again, 0.6 is right there, zero, 04 is right there. So when you go 0.6 and zero, 04, 0.6 and 0, 04, you will end up with 0 0.7389. 0 0.7389, that means 73.89%. So if you look for 0 0.7389, you're going to see that number 10 is letter B. Okay? Let's try that one again. But I'm going to remind you what I just said a few minutes ago. 
You go to the Z table when it is less than or equal to, in other words, to the left of this. If I wanted this area over here, I would have to subtract from the whole curve, which is one, which is question number 11, right? What's the dead giveaway? Right there. Please notice that it says Z is greater than or equal to negative 2.34, which means that I don't want the shaded area. I want the non-shaded area because I'm looking to the right. If it was to be this graph, I'm looking for this area here, okay? So let's go over and look at our Z tables, except this time it is negative. So you're gonna look at, po at negative point 2.3 and then at zero, four, that's the other value. So look up negative 2.3, and then at zero, four from the top. What does that mean? Well, here goes my negative Z table, right? What was the number I wanted? Negative 2.3. Negative 2.3 is right here. Zero, four is up here. All you gotta do is go to negative 2.3, and it is 0 0.0096, 0 0.0096, negative 2.3 at 0 0.04. That is 0 0.0096. Okay, let me put that aside. So this will be 0 0.0096, but you will remember that I said it's the non-shaded area, so you have to subtract it from one because of the greater than, okay? So watch out in your quiz if it says greater than, Take it away from one. So one minus 0 0.0096 is 9904. In other words, they didn't want the left, they wanted the right. So you gotta get 100% of the curve, take away this 0 0.0096, which is 96% of the graph, and then get that little bit over here, okay? All right, that's number 11. Moving on to number 12, it's just going to take a you over and it's going to ask you for the 44th percentile. Now that's a percent. Remember, percents are in the middle. Z scores are on the outside. Okay, so all I gotta do is go look for the closest number, 2.44. Okay, so let me get my Z table here and look for 0.44. Um, four, six, four, five, four, four. Oh, there it is, right there. The closest one is 0 0.4404. So you go over to the left, point, negative point one, and then you go up, zero, five. Again, you find it, go to the left, and go up. When you do that, you're going to get negative 0.15. Okay, remember, it was negative 0.1, and then up on top, it was 0 0.5. And when you add that, you will get negative 0.15. That is number 12. We're almost done. Number 13. Okay, let's read what number 13 says. It says the average, the mean, another word for mean is average, is 180. It says that the standard deviation is 7.5. And now they're giving you the 95th percentile. Okay, what does that mean? Well, they're looking for, if I remind you of the, the, the normal curve, 95 percentile was two standard deviations right here. So I'm looking for two standard deviations. 68 is one percentile, one standard deviation. 95 is two standard deviations. So what I gotta do is I have to come over here and right down smack in the middle, you're gonna put your mean of 180. And then you're going to begin to add standard deviation of 7.5. So when you add 7.5, you get 187.5. When you add another 7.5, you get 195. Now, on the left-hand side, instead of adding, you subtract. So 180, take away the standard deviation of 7.5 is 172.5. When you take away another 7.5, you get 165. And so this is your two standard deviations. There is your 95% of the shaded region. And the question was between, let's see, number 13, it says between which two numbers? And you're going to see that letter C is between 165 and 195. There's number 13. Okay. 
Number 14, a little bit more of work. Let me read it to you. It reads that your average, which is of course your mean, is 180 centimeters. Your standard deviation is 7.5 centimeters and your Z-score percentile is 95th percentile. Since they give me the percent, I have to use the table. So I'm going to look up 95%. Again, I'm going to go into here and I'm going to look 95%. Well, these are all too small. So I guess I got to go over here and look for 95%, 98, 97, 96, 95. Oops, it's right there. And you go over to 1.605. Okay, 1.6 and 05 is 1.65. And so when you look up 95%, your Z-chart will give you 1.65. Now I'm going to go use the formula which said that your Z-score, which is 1.65, is equal to the score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay. So I took the percent. I got it at 1.65. I am now going to put a little 1 right there. And of course, this is now a proportion. You're going to sus us cross multiply. When you do that, you get 7.5 times 1.65, which is this. When you take away, excuse me, when you add 180 to the other side, you're going to end up with 192.3 for number 14, which is, of course, letter E. Okay, that is 14. Two more. Number 15 says, if I was to give you <clears throat> this particular graph, which they did, they're asking for what is the standard deviation if you have this much, which is 95%. And of course, we know that 95% is two standard deviations. That's why I went two to the right and two to the left. Okay, so if I take a look here from 80 to 96, that's a total of 16. Well, I want to know what the mean is right smack in the middle. So that means I travel eight this way and eight that way because half of 16 is eight. So what will I get when I do that? You're going to end up with 88, which means that your mean is 88. Because if you add 8, you get 96. If you subtract 8, you get 80. Do the same thing again. What's the median between 80 and 88? Well, it's 84. And what's the median between 88 and 96? Well, it's 92. And so here you see that your standard deviation is going to be obviously from here to here four, from here to here four, from here to here four, from here to here four. So what's the standard deviation? Four. Just for you. <laughs> one last one. And this one will help us understand one last piece about the normal curve, okay? It says the set of scores are given to you. The mean is 30. There it is. The standard deviation is 4.8. And the question is, which one of these numbers that they give you is the least often? Okay, so let me hide the answers. And let's take a look at this. If the mean is 30, that's the one right smack in the middle. If the standard deviation is 4.8, at 4.8, you get 34.8. At 4.8, you get 39.6. Okay. If you subtract the standard deviation 4.8, you get 25.2. And if you subtract again 4.8, you get 20.4. So here are all your values. One standard deviation away, two standard deviations away. Okay. Now, they're going to give you all these red numbers. And we're going to put them sort of like on this number line here to see where they belong. 21 is right after 20. 26 is right after 25. 29 is right before 30. 36 is right after 34.8. And 40 is right after 39.6. Sort of like somewhere like right there, okay? All right. Now remember, this is the curve. The one that occurs most often is the one that's right smack in the middle. And the one that occurs the least often is the one that is the farthest away. So you have to take a look at the question to see if they're asking for the most often one, which is, of course, the one closest to the middle, 29, or the least often one, which is, of course, the one that is farthest away that's more than two standard deviations, which is 40. In this particular case, they were asking for the least often, which is 40. Had they asked for the uh, most often, you would have said 29, okay? That's the normal curve in a nutshell. So now you're going to finish up letter B. 
there are a couple of pages on your extra credit packet, pages seven and eight back in front, okay? Those are gonna be for practice. If you want some extra credit bonus points, there you are, go work on those. Otherwise, please go to the end of your packet and start working on the reviews. What are the reviews called? They are called Statistics and Data Analysis Review Letter A. That one will be needed to do within the next week. And then you can do letter B uh, once again later on. It'll probably be for extra credit. The quiz for this next Friday will all be on the normal curve. So get yourself ready with this. And then after that, you're going to be receiving a practice for the final because the week of following that, uh, the week of May 20, actually on the day of May 26, your final exam for Algebra 2 will be ready for you to take during the day, okay? For now, this is Mr. G signing off. Until I get to see you again, see you when I see you. Adios, amigos.